Don't get lost in your present sufferings. Look at creation. It's groaning in great expectation for the revelation of the children of God. We groan. We groan, but we don't groan without hope because of the promises of God. And then finally, uh, Paul in this chapter would call us not only to look around at creation and its example or to look ahead to what God has promised, but also to look up, to look up for the help that we need in our present time, in the midst of our present suffering. Hear the word of the Lord from Romans chapter 8 at verse 26 and 27. Paul writes, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through word wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Imagine that. The Holy Spirit who lives in us, who is the first fruits of what is to come, one of the works that he accomplishes is to help us in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our suffering. And so we're to look up and consider what the Holy Spirit does. He, he groan, creation groans in size, and it waits for restoration of all things. The Christian, you and I groan and sigh as we wait in hope for the restoration of our bodies, the freedom from pain, the freedom from suffering, the freedom from death. And here we reach a crescendo in the text to see that the Holy Spirit also groans within us. But he groans silently. And his groans are intercession. He knows our heart. He knows our mind. He knows our need. And he presents our case to the Heavenly Father. He intercedes for us according to the will of God. According to the will of God. Have you, have you been there? Have you been on your knees groaning and crying out to God for a child and not knowing how to pray? H have you been there? Have you been there beside the bed of a loved one who is sick and seriously ill and dying and you haven't known how to pray? Have you been there? Have you been alone in that hospital chapel? I've been there. I've been in that hospital chapel in the middle of the night praying for a mom who is hemorrhaging, and another time praying for a wife who was in a coma, and praying and yet not knowing how to pray, just pouring out my heart to God, not knowing exactly what to ask. Have you been there? Have you been there awake at night with a burden on your heart that keeps you from sleep, and you don't know how to pray? You don't know how to pray. And so it would be wrong for us to conclude that when we don't know how to pray, that we just shouldn't pray. It would be wrong for us to cease getting on our knees, cease taking time to pray about things we don't know how to pray. Because the promise of God's word is this, that the Holy Spirit is our help. And he helps us when we don't know how to pray. He helps us in our weakness and intercedes on our behalf before God that the will of God would be accomplished according to our prayers, even when we don't know what to pray.